One of the best pitchers in the sport is still out there as a free agent. We found it interesting here that if the Padres do get back into the bidding and they bring him back on a long-term deal, he would have a chance to get to Randy Jones territory as the all-time left-handed starter in franchise history. Right now, even though RJ's uh, career record is below 500, his peripheral numbers are fantastic. He happened to pitch for some rotten Padres right. teams when he was out there, uh, but a former Cy Young Award winner on your left, a two-time Cy Young Award winner on your right who may or may not be out of San Diego for 2024 and beyond. Got us to thinking as we welcome you back to the Tuesday program. For many teams, like the Padres, uh, like the Phillies with Steve Carlton, there's no question as to who the all-time left-handed starter is in franchise history. For other teams, there are questions, and there are a couple of people that might fit that category, like the Dodgers. And this is going to ruffle feathers among the traditionalists. Yeah. But here we go. You have one all-time left-handed starter to choose between the great Hall of Famer Sandy Koufax and the current great uh, Hall of Famer to be, Clayton Kershaw. And who are you picking? I mean, Kershaw's, that's the lowest DRA uh, since uh, modern baseball. So with Sandy Koufax, you're talking about those six amazing years back to back, finishing with a Cy Young Award year, when he won, what, 25 or 26 games? I mean, it's hard to ever chase an idol, uh, an icon, and that was, is what Sandy is. But uh, you can't downplay what Kershaw has done. And um, Sandy's just uh, bigger than the game. There's only a few players like that. Yeah, I mean, this is a ridiculous conversation <laughs> because you can make such a case for both. Uh, Keith, do you have anything that might kind of distinguish one from the other if you're casting a final ballot? I would just say that the two World Series MVPs is probably the separator mm. for Koufax. But both MVPs of a regular season, both three times Cy Young, so certainly a conversation. It is a conversation, and for me, um, you know, I think there was a moment in time where when, when Kershaw's body of work became bigger than, than that of Koufax, and again, like, the traditionalists aren't going to like yeah. that, but, I mean, Clayton's record is unbelievable. His numbers are otherworldly. They, they are, and, and he's had some amazing games. But Sandy was that pitcher that every time he went on the hill, you thought it could be a no-hitter. Mm -hmm. He was one of the rare guys. Let's give you an, like, a, a, another franchise uh, for whom there's not an easy choice for all-time left-handed starter, and that's the Oakland A's. Mm. Barry Zito had great numbers there. Both of these guys won Cy Young Awards. Vita Blue happened to win an MVP and a Cy Young Award in the same season back in 1971. He is still, by the way, the last switch hitter that's right. to win an <laughs> MVP. It's a trick question. Uh, you know, a little bit more on the canvas for Vita in terms of wins. Zito's impact was also big. Uh, I, I would say that, like, Keith had the two World Series MVPs for Koufax. The fact that Vita was a star for the three straight World Series winners in Oakland probably gives him the nod. Yeah, bo both uh, pitchers at some point pitched for both Bay Area teams, right? The, the Giants and the A's, but Vita Blue. When I was a kid, when they were first making their mark, the A's 72, 73, and 74, I was 12 years old. And Vita Blue was just everything. You wanted to be Vita Blue. But Barry Zito came and he had that curveball that was as good as any that's ever been in the game. And um, there was a, a coolness, style, hipness mm. to uh, Barry Zito on how he performed his craft as well. Vita for me is the guy, this is probably one and two. And, um, you know, I still, I feel so strongly about Vita needing to be re-examined as a Hall of Famer. I get it. Only, quote, un only 124 wins. But he was one of those matinee kind of marquee stars in the 1970s that you bought a ticket for. So, it, you know, in his era, there was nobody more dominant. And by the way, had it not been for the passing of his father when he was in high school, he was all set to go sign, sealed, and delivered and played at Alabama, and he yeah. would have been the greatest left-handed throwing quarterback in Alabama history. He would have gotten there before Ken Stabler. <laughs> really? But his wow. family needed the money, so he signed with, uh, with Charlie O'Finley, and the, the rest was history. All right, here's, here's the last team that we can debate. All-time left-handed starter here. Um, this, this is really a good one. Uh, and, and again, like, Kitty pitched for 15 seasons with the Twins. 
15 of his, what, 26 seasons? Yeah. Or was it 46 seasons <laughs> that Kitty pitched? That's right. But Johan's impact when he was out there, and again, half the time, was great. If you're just talking about the accumulation stats, it's caught. But what do you think on this well, one? Well, Jimmy also um, known as one of the best athletes, fielders of his uh, of his generation, of any generation, because of his, uh, I don't know what he has, 15, 16 gold gloves, maybe more. But I have to go with Santana on this only because of the two Cy Youngs, unanimous in both of those, and he should have won a third. The one year I think Cologne won it, Bartolo Cologne, Santana should have won it then. Um, and got to see him later in his career when he was in a Mets uniform. But when Santana was on the hill for the Twins in his heyday, it was win day. This is interesting, Keith, because you got one guy who pitched for 15 years there, won only eight, yet uh, there's a lot of momentum for Santana to be the guy. Yep, Ron took the words right out of my mouth on Johan with that Cy Young. I'll throw out one more as kind of a third wild card, not saying you should be the choice, but how about back-to-back -back years of a Cy Young and a World Series MVP for Frank Viola, mm. Ron's contemporary? Ah, sweet music. Frankie was good. That great changeup, fastball, curveball mix. Uh, he knew how to pitch. I saw him when he was in St. John's and I pitched against him in a college game when he was 18 19 years old he pitched like he was a 30 year veteran or a 30 year old in the major leagues he just always had a way of adding and subtracting.